go ahead and set the rear wheel alignment. The reason I made this video is because when I went to the auto shop to set the rear wheel alignment, uh, they said it cost me four to five hundred dollars. I thought that was expensive, so I decided to do it myself. After looking at several videos, looking at the Corvette forum, I figured out a good way to do it. Uh, the procedure is not mine; it's actually a combination of a few uh, other procedures, but it seemed to work for this Corvette, at least enough to where I could take it in and get the front wheel alignment, which is only about seventy-nine to eighty dollars. Much cheaper if I do it myself. Okay, to do the rear alignment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the caliper off. And after I take the caliper off, I'm going to rotate the rotor around so that I have the flat surface of the rotor right here. And then I'll use these shims to put in the trailing arm to make the adjustment. What I will also do is take the uh, nut off the leaf spring right here and make sure I put a jack under it because there's a lot of pressure on this leaf spring. That way I have no pressure on the trailing arm. And I'll just let that hang. Up here is the area where the trailing arm is. And these shims right here go right in here like this. And then on the other side. And that's how you get the uh, adjustment between left and right. Before I do that, I'll have to take the cotter pin out of this bolt and back it off and then back the nut off. Two by four, the exact length of the rim. I put the two by four on the rim and I want it to be, uh, to touch each end of the rim because I want the true reading of the rim, not the deficiencies of the tire. For example, just like this. I take my level, I put my level on it and what I'm looking for is a balance right here, level to be perfect. When I do that, then I know I have zero camber when the level is at center. Camber could be adjusted by turning, loosening this bolt right here, and then turning it to the left or the right to increase or decrease camber. You will notice there is one on each side for each wheel. Now what I want to do here is make sure that this car tracks directly straight down the road. So I took my string and put it on the back of the uh, rotor and I measured it and I put a straight uh, line down the side of the Corvette. And what I did was, and I made a measurement right here, the back of the door, and made sure it was flush with the string. And then I did the same in the front of the door seam, right here. And I ensured that that was the same. And I made sure that the string was tight enough so that it would give me a reading right here on the disc. I need a 1 8 inch gap from the front of the disc to the edge of the string. Keep in mind the back of the string is flush. So I have one eighth right here. And I move the trailing arm back and forth and install shims until I get that right. And what I'll do is this measurement right here to the back of the door will be the same as I do the other side and the same on the front of the door. If I ensure that that measurement is the same, then I'll ensure that that side of the car is tracking directly straight with this side of the car and that the measurements are exactly the same. Now take note, is all I did was reverse the rotor so that the flat edge of the rotor is extending past the edge of the car in order for that uh, string to extend out. You will also notice that I disconnected the spring on the bottom of the car and that way it would give me a true and easy reading. You notice how I have the jack just under the rotor. I put a piece of wood under there just to ensure that I don't scratch up the rotor in any way. I put a block under the rotor so that I can simulate the exact weight of the car actually being on the ground. And in order to do that, I simply put a level 
right here like this and it ensured that the bubble was dead center. Once all that was done, I made all my measurements. So in other words, what I'm doing here is I'm ensuring that this wheel tracks directly straight. Once it tracks directly straight, then I just move the front of the trailing arm forward and back until I get this measurement right here, one eighth of an inch difference. And this is sure that it stays in line down the road. I take this measurement and I'll do the exact same on the other side to ensure that the distance from here to here to the frame of the back of the door, right here, and the front of the door is exactly the same. And then I will do the same, exact same thing to the rotor on the other side. And this will ensure that both sides are exactly the same and tracking on the same distance. It will also ensure that that one eighth of an inch will stay in line so that it tracks down the road uh, in the right sequence along with the front wheels. Now once I have my shims uh, tucked in, I went ahead and put my lock washer and nut on the, uh, on the bolt. Now I'm going to go ahead and torque that to 50 foot pounds. Okay, I'm now working on the left side of the car. You notice how I just tied the string up right here, wrapped it around the rotor, and just kind of put it center. And now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this distance from the back of the door and the front of the door is exactly the same. Very close right there. Ah, here I need to measure in some more. A little bit out. Let me see here. I have it all assembled now, and pretty much I just assembled it the same way that I took it apart. Hopefully, we have saved you $400 to $500 in automotive costs and alignment. I encourage you to always use safety when operating around a vehicle, especially when jacking and down jacking a vehicle. Also, when connecting and disconnecting the rear leaf spring. Hopefully, you'll keep the car straight and tracking down the road straight.